Okay, so welcome to Retech, and today we're going to cover the history of the Sinclair Computers. Sinclair Computers was a British company that brought out computers that were affordable. Now the ZX80 was groundbreaking for offering a computer for less than a hundred pounds. That was completely unheard of. That was a price point that most people thought was impossible at the time. And Clive Sinclair managed to hit that price point. He also managed to do it by cutting a few corners, so to speak, to get a machine that would work within that range. So the ZX80 wasn't the best machine. It wasn't the most powerful machine. It wasn't the most fully featured machine, but it was the only machine you could get for less than a hundred pounds. That enabled people who had a passing interest in computer technology to go out and buy one. It enabled people to buy them for their children. It enabled them to experiment and try out this newfangled computing thing. Clive knew that this was a market that needed to be tapped and he knew that if he could, he would generate a lot of sales. And that's exactly what happened. The ZX80 was under £100. And all of its detractors at the time, saying that it wasn't a real computer, saying that it was a toy and so on, they did it because they couldn't do it. And that's the way it was. They couldn't produce a computer at that price point. They couldn't produce anything close to that price point, let alone a computer. And some people at the time were struggling to produce a keyboard for that price point, let alone an entire machine. So the pricing was the key. The computer was almost secondary to that philosophy, but it worked. Now the MK14 has been a modest success as I knew it would be, but is the personal computer not a desirable notion? It could be bought for £100, less if purchased as a kit, and it plugged into any television. Programs were sold on cassettes, playable by a cheap cassette recorder. Sinclair's computers took over most of the British market. And for a short time, even in America, he was selling more machines than the three market leaders put together. They turned up everywhere. There's a large number of people applying them in all sorts of ways that are unsuspected. I got into a London taxi the other day, had one of our computers built in, and he could you give him any destination, and he could tap it in and tell you what the cost would be. So the MK14 was the original Science of Cambridge computer, and it was very limited being sold as a kit, very limited memory, and there wasn't a lot you could do with it. And then along came the ZX80, a real computer, and it was a revelation. It was a full function computer. It was either a kit already built, 1K RAM, 64K Max, 4K ROM with Sinclair Basic, based on ANSI Basic, 40 key keyboard, molded case, Z80A at 3.25 megahertz. It had 22 by 32 text with an output to a TV set available in 1980 for 99.95 and it sold 50,000 units even then it had its limitations Jesus it's like trying to read braille through a pair of gardening gloves so the display generator of the ZX80 well, it kind of had no display. The generator itself used minimal hardware plus a combination of software to generate a video signal. And the problem with this is it could only generate a picture while the machine was idle, while it was not doing anything. If it was doing calculations, the screen would go blank. So what choice did you have back in 1980 when the ZX80 was out? Well, you had the Video Genie and you had the TRS-80 Model 1 and they were both very similar machines based on 
the TRS-80, so the Video Genie was almost a clone. You also had the Commodore PET. And on the horizon there was the Commodore VIC-20. Now, there wasn't a vast amount of choice in the 1980s as far as computers were concerned, but one thing they had in common was the fact that they cost many, many times the cost of a ZX80. There was very little you could get out in the wild, so to speak, at the time that didn't cost four, five or six hundred pounds. So you have to remember the um, Sinclair ZX80 cost ninety nine ninety five at a time when other machines cost between four and over a thousand pounds. Now it was a miracle of engineering to reduce the components down enough to make it cheap enough to be an impulse buy, cheap enough for somebody to think I wouldn't mind having a go at trying to program a computer or finding out what they're all about and cheap enough for parents to buy them for their children and that's where this machine came in. It was a starter machine. It was brilliant at getting people interested in computers so then they could go on and buy bigger, more expensive machines once they got the bug. And you have to remember that programming was the key thing. It was writing stuff in BASIC. That was one of the biggest kind of marketing tools that these machines had at the time. It only lasted for a few years because by 1984, People weren't really doing BASIC anymore. They weren't really into programming as much as they were back in the early 1980s. Now, these machines were not perfect. These machines had a few issues, so to speak. The keyboard was terrible. It was a membrane keyboard. It was a piece of plastic printed with legends and characters on it, etc. And the reason behind that is because if you try to put a full travel keyboard on a computer at the time, the full travel keyboard would have cost more than he was asking for the computer. So it was an impossible thing to do. The case was two bits of blown vinyl or blown plastic basically that were clamshell together and it was very cheap but very effective and the styling was always a key to Sinclair's products. He liked a certain style. So the whole package worked as one cohesive piece. Now it didn't have much in the way of anything else really. It didn't have any sound. It had very limited video as we've said. It also had very limited expansion options because it had an edge connector and an earphone and a microphone socket and that is as far as it went. It was kind of an extension on the MK14 but it was a much much better package. And without the ZX80 you probably would never have had the granddaddy of computers as far as the UK is mainly concerned and that is the ZX81. The ZX80 was always seen as a stepping stone to the ZX81 and that's how Clive and his company progressed these models. So I hope you enjoyed looking at this and I hope you enjoyed our little journey through the second of the Sinclair machines and I'll hope you would subscribe because there's more to come. So thank you for watching. Thank you.